Radioactive water continued to leak into the ocean at the damaged Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant on Monday, and its source remains unknown. Plant operator Tokyo Electric Power Company discovered on Saturday that the contaminated water appeared to be gushing from a crack in a concrete pit near reactor number two. TEPCO first tried to pour concrete into the crack to halt the leak, but the attempt failed. On Sunday, the company injected a mixture of absorbent polymers, sawdust, and newspaper to try and clog the flow, but this has yet to absorb the water. On Monday, workers tried to see if they could trace the pathway of the leak by dumping into the system a powder dye designed to turn water a milky white. The colorant was poured into a tunnel leading to the pit, but no white water has appeared so far. TEPCO now thinks the radioactive water may be coming from another source. And is considering different strategies to find out where. If efforts to plug the leak continue to fail, the company will next try to set up undersea silt barriers near the reactor's seawater intake ducts to prevent radioactive water from spreading in the ocean. The barriers would have fiber curtains attached with weights that would extend to the sea bottom and contain the contaminated water. Tokyo Electric Power Company is releasing radioactive wastewater into the sea from the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant as part of efforts to stabilize the troubled plant. The utility started releasing 11,500 tons of wastewater on Monday evening. The company says the level of iodine 131 in the wastewater is about 100 times the legal limit, but the plant operator says. If people ate fish and seaweed caught near the plant every day for a year, their radiation exposure would be 0.6 millisievert. It has the annual permissible level for the general public is 1 millisievert. Wastewater will be released to make room for highly contaminated water from the number two reactor complex. Radioactive water 100,000 times the normal level in an operating reactor has been found in a turbine building. This is also hampering efforts to cool the damaged reactors. Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Edano says the government approved the operation plan as removing the water from the number two reactor is a more urgent matter. Edano calls the operation an emergency measure to ensure the safety of the plant. He adds that the government told the utility to monitor radioactivity in the seawater and closely track the environmental impact. The chief executive of General Electric says his company will help address the problems at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. Jeffrey Imelt met with Japanese Economy Minister Banri Kaeda on Monday, along with Hitachi President Hiroaki Nakanishi. General Electric and Hitachi are partners in the nuclear power industry. Imelt offered condolences to those affected by what he called an unprecedented disaster. And said the U.S. conglomerate is willing to provide whatever assistance is necessary to deal with the situation. He told Kaeda that GE hopes to help restore the cooling functions at the plant and neutralize the radioactivity once the plant is stabilized. General, Elec General Electric is the manufacturer of the number one and number two reactors at the Fukushima plant. Imelt suggested that his company is ready to supply power generation equipment to Tokyo Electric Power Company. To help the utility address electricity shortages, he told reporters after the meeting that General Electric wants to create a support system with the utility and Hitachi. In today's angle, we hear from Chief Researcher at the Asian Disaster Reduction Center, Makoto Fujieda. He shares his perspectives on the work to bring the troubled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant under control. It's a job which is likely to take several months. First, the water situation. The restoration task is not something that can be completed in a matter of days or a week. That's because radioactive water soaking the floors of the buildings must first be removed so that the insides of the structures can be examined. Based on the results, workers will then have to consider what steps to take. The most urgent task is to carefully assess the state of the power plant. The exact radiation levels of the structures housing the reactors, turbine buildings, 
and the surrounding areas need to be determined. A system to constantly monitor radiation should be in place so as to clarify which areas are safe to stay in and for how long. I would propose mapping out areas that are off limits due to high radiation and those where workers can stay for, say, three hours. The zones should be clearly distinguished for workers' safety. It's also crucial that contaminated debris be removed. The task could be done with major Japanese construction firms' remote controlled tractors, for example, equipped with GPS, global positioning systems. Hopes are also pinned on robots provided by the United States and other nations to check radiation levels and pinpoint damage in high risk areas inside the buildings. After assessing the state of ruined areas, the task to restore the reactor's cooling systems must begin. Of course, this requires special know how. Workers well versed in the related plumbing and electrical connections are the ones for the task. There are now four to five hundred such personnel, including those from the Tokyo Electric Power Company and its contractors, on site, and I believe they're the only ones who can bring the plant under control. To support them, there are probably plans to bring in staff from other nuclear plants, as well as electricians and other specialists. But it will be essential to set, to set strict controls over the work sites based on radiation levels. This is vital because the greater the workers' sense of urgency, the longer they may be willing to submit to their mission. This may expose them to high levels of radiation without them realizing it. It's natural to expect they'll work safely as a team and follow orders, but in this situation where they're under extreme pressure, rules can be overlooked. It's essential the workers be safeguarded through a strict command structure. In today's angle, we asked Chief Researcher at the Asian Disaster Reduction Center, Makoto Fujieda, about efforts to prevent further disaster at the troubled nuclear power plant in Fukushima Prefecture. Radiation levels continue to drop or remain flat on Monday morning in many locations around the disabled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant. In Fukushima City, about 65 kilometers northwest of the power plant, 2.51 microsieverts power of radiation was detected. The reading in Koryama City, also in Fukushima Prefecture, stood at 2.21. Both figures are higher than the normal levels of 0.04 to 0.06 microsieverts power, but lower than that on Sunday. The reading stood at 0.49 microsieverts power in Kita Ibaraki City and 0.07 microsieverts power in Sendai City, Miyagi Prefecture. Higher than usual levels of radiation were also observed in other locations, including Tokyo's Shinjuku Ward and main cities of Tochigi, Gunma, Saitama, Chiba, and Kanagawa prefectures. Authorities say these levels of radiation do not pose health risks. Japan's health ministry has decided to maintain its current radiation limits for food, despite calls by farmers to ease them. The ministry set tentative maximum allowable levels for radiation in food several days after the earthquake and tsunami crippled the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. The levels were based on the maximum radiation a person may be exposed to in one year, according to the Nuclear Safety Commission. The government banned shipments of vegetables and milk from Fukushima and three other prefectures after radioactive substances were detected in them. In some cases, the government simply advised the public not to consume certain foods. A health ministry council determined on Monday that the Commission's standards on permissible radiation levels are indeed a reasonable basis for setting food safety levels from a standpoint of consumer health. <laughs> 